Hello everyone, it is Matt here from Scoop in Response, and today we're going to be looking at a new commander that came out with the Warhammer 40k uh, commander deck. So we're going to be looking at a card, uh, Manius Kalgar. It's a Esper 5 drop. Uh, it's a double strike uh, legendary creature, uh, a starter's warrior. I'm probably butchering that. I have no idea how to pronounce half of these things in, in Warhammer. It's not something I've ever been into, if I'm being honest. The commander itself is a double striker with whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card and pay six to create two white uh, a status warrior creature tokens with vigilance. So basically every time a token comes into play, you're drawing cards. So what I thought would be a really fun mechanic to pair this with um, is cycling. So whenever I look at uh, a tokens matter deck, I really struggle to put together content for it because of the fact that it's just so, uh, I guess, to me, tokens decks kind of like build themselves in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things that just automatically you can easily include. You could you could put together a generic tokens list of about 150 cards, and based on the color identity you're in, you just subtract all the cards out of the out of the deck that isn't in the color identity, and you've kind of got like most likely a really good tokens matters deck. So for something like this, for me to really sort of add value to you guys, I wanna actually put a bit of creative effort into coming up with something that's maybe not just, uh, you know, playing an anointed procession and, and finding some big enchantment or some big token doubler or something like that. Um, and with this commander, it's actually really sweet to sort of go down the route of um, cycling with this commander. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown why that is once, once we go through the deck. But basically, I'll add one caveat before we start and say that you could probably actually go deeper into the cycling theme, particularly in the land base. There is so many cycling uh, lands in three colors to choose from, particularly Esper, that uh, yeah, it's absolutely sick. I've sort of tempered it a little bit so that we've got, you know, basics and, um, you know, untapped lands and all of that as well. But you would definitely be able to just go harder into this cycling theme. So the idea is um, <clears throat> we've got a lot of enchantments in Esper that can uh, give us additional value when we cycle. Uh, and not just enchantments, you know, there's also creatures, everything like that as well. Esper happens to be in a really good set of colors when it comes to tutoring out your enchantments that are also going to give us, you know, that additional value from cycling. So that's kind of the idea. We're going to be using, uh, you know, a whole lot of things to create tokens, which will then in turn draw us cards. We're going to be cycling our cards. Uh, some of these cycling effects are going to create tokens. We get to draw more cards, we get to cycle more cards. So let's jump in and have a look. So starting off with creatures and planeswalkers, we've got Elspeth, Sun's Champion, put three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield and the neg three destroy all creatures with four power or greater. So this fits really tightly in with our commander and our theme. So we're gonna have lots of tokens, which is really good. And then destroying creatures with four power or greater, you know, even our uh, commander is only three power. So that's really good in the sense that it's gonna dodge that. Mostly this is the fact that we've got that recurrable, uh, you know, that repeatable rather um, token generation and it's, it's three a turn, which is insane and it's a plus effect. Uh, I can't see us really ever using the emblem in this kind of deck. Like we're not really that worried about it overall. Uh, it's mostly just so that we've got a board wipe when we need to and then creating the tokens after that. So really sweet there. Stoneforge Mystic, um, you know, we're going to be using it to tutor for a few bits and pieces, but it's just another great thing. Um, now with uh, the living weapon creatures, they create a token for Axian Germ. So what Stoneforge actually does is creates, uh, you, know, you know, you're getting an extra card, but then when you actually cast that card or when you activate the card and bring that into play, because the equipment is attached to that token, you get to draw a card from it, uh, from your commander. Uh, you know, again, so a little bit of extra value. Stoneforge is obviously just a great card on its own, but with this deck, it's just that little bit of extra value that's like just tipped it over the edge and made it really sweet. Valiant Rescuer. 
It's got cycling itself. And whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. So you can imagine this because it says every turn, if we're able to cycle a card uh, every turn on our opponent's turns, we, we get to make uh, a 1-1 one, one each turn and draw an additional card each turn. So we're going up a card every time we cycle. Now we've also got things that are gonna let us uh, cycle twice in a turn for value and we'll go into that shortly. We've got the probably the most contentious card in the deck. This is really the only win con. I like this a lot more than something like Thassa's Oracle for this kind of list because you know we're not trying to win on the spot. This is basically saying, hey, eventually we, we might wanna win the game. So we're gonna try and uh, win the game uh, with this if we can't beat you down. And that's only going to be ever only if we've ever uh, you know drawn our entire deck, which we're going to be doing manually. We're not going to be doing you know uh, you know in a one shot or anything like that. So I think it's a fair include to get down to the bottom fifteen cards or so, and then be thinking about this as a win con. Uh, we've got Min Wily Illusionist. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a one one blue illusion creature token. Um, basically, they get bigger for uh, each other illusion. So. Uh, and whenever an illusion you control dies, you may put a permanent card with mana value less than or equal to the creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. So really sweet effect there. Um, you know, even for the one ones, you can be putting lands uh, onto the, the battlefield because it says permanent card, not uh, non-land permanent card. So this is a really sweet ramp spell, but you'll see when, when we draw our second card each turn, so that could be on your turn, your first cycle, which is then going to trigger the Valiant Rescuer, creating a 1-1, you draw a card, uh, then you're gonna draw your second card uh, as a result of that um, because of the token being made. Uh, in other turns, when you cycle two cards, you're going to get your second card for that turn. That's gonna create a token, which is then gonna draw you another card again. So really sweet there. Nadir Kraken, whenever you draw a card, if you may, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a tentacle creature token. So uh, yeah, it's right into that theme. You know, we're making tokens, tokens draw us cards. We draw a card, we pay one, we make a token, put a counter. So the thing gets bigger and we go wider at the same time. Sire Master Thopterus, cast an artifact spell, create a, a, uh, a Thopter. So, you know, and then once we've made the Thopter, it's gonna trigger our commander. We're gonna get another uh, card to draw. And then you can sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card. Really, really sweet. Uh, you know, just, we've got lots of card draw. You're gonna see almost no cantrips in this deck. It's all gonna be built around cycling as our card draw to give us, you know, additional uh, cards, I guess, kind of similar to if, if we think about this in the way that Riel is the same thing except in discard. This is the cycling, uh, you know, version of that. Snare Tactician, whenever you cycle a card, tap target creature and opponent controls. This is really good just to hold up protection for your um, life total. You know, you can be talking about it every time your opponents go to, before they go to combat and declare attacks, you can be asking them, you know, is anything gonna come at me because I'll probably just cycle something and tap that down, you know, when you got this out. We got Spellseeker. So this is just a great tutor card um, to go and get specific uh, instants and sorceries from your deck. Uh, anything under two or less, we'll go into what those are in the next section. Uh, we've got the Sheldred, the uh, the new one. It's a four five, and whenever you draw a card, you gain life, and whenever your opponents draw cards, they lose life. Uh, so really sweet. You know, you're going to be drawing a whole bunch of cards. So this is like an enormous, uh, you know, life gain engine. Might just switch it from the Phyrexian to the regular printing for that one. There we go, yeah. So whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Uh, I, I think this card's just like gas in every format. Um, it's too pushed, uh, to be honest. It's just too good all around. A four five is absolutely great. Um, stats for four mana too. Ultramarines Honor Guard. So this is one of the new uh, cards from the set as well. So other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And Squad is basically like kicker for uh, creatures and it copies them each time. So yeah, really sweet. Urza, Lord High Artificer, basically does everything that Urza does except you're gonna be drawing a card now when it ETBs because of the artifact creature token. Zerd the Enchanter, don't worry, we don't have any hard stacks pieces or anything like that. Um, it's just for getting out our value pieces and our engines to start cycling with. So we'll have a look at what those look like uh, in the next section. Bone Miser, this one's sweet. So uh, whenever you cycle things, you get more things basically. So 
Whenever you discard a creature card, create a 2-2 black zombie. Whenever you discard a land card, add 2 black mana. And whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. So if we're going to be cycling creature cards, we're going to be making tokens and we're going to be drawing cards. If we're cycling land cards, we're going to be adding mana. And, uh, you know, we can then use that to do more and more things again. Uh, absolutely insane card in this list. Just absolutely sick. Uh, very cool. Very, I guess, different in, in what you can be doing. I've got Hollow One. Um, so Hollow One is just a free creature often. If you've got, uh, you know, three uh, spells that you can cycle or three cards that you can cycle, then you can play this for free afterwards. I just think it's a cool card to include in a list like this. Um, you know, it's also an artifact, so that's going to give you certain synergies uh, with things like Urza and everything like that as well. Timeless Dragon. Um, so this is plain cycling, so you can go and search. Uh, so you cycle it, so you discard it. That's going to be, you know, a, a, a search. Um, it's not a card draw, though, so it's not going to trigger those card draw cyclings, um, but still very cool. And then the Eternalize ability is um, it creates a... A token so it's another token way that you can sorry another way you can generate a token from the graveyard um, you know so just extra value in that respect moving on to the instants and sorceries so we've got one sorcery in this uh, in this deck and it is Savine's reclamation so uh, it is a absolutely insane combo card but I love it for value too so all of your three drops that you might have in the deck you know, you could be looking at going and getting them back from the graveyard. You could get your Scythopterist or your, your Min or your uh, Valiant Rescuer or even your Spellseeker and Stoneforge. And it's just, you know, returns us to the battlefield. But it's when you have it in the graveyard itself, you can flash it back for four. So that's uh, for five, sorry. And it'll actually copy the spell. So... One of the cool things you can see, we've got Entomb in the deck as well. One of the cool things that you can do, you know, if you have like just really good value cards in the in the graveyard and you're like, oh, cool, I've just drawn an Entomb. What, is, what does this really mean? Uh, you know, Entomb can kind of mean like four cards, basically. So if you cast the Entomb, you go and get the Savine's Reclam Reclamation into the bin. You can then go and like reanimate your Spellseeker and your Stoneforge Mystic, and both of them will go and get you another card again. And you've basically got yourself, you know, two, four. And then if there's anything off of that that's going to be generating value again, you're just, you know, you're getting so positive off of the a seemingly, you know, from nowhere uh, card. So I love this card um, in turn, but also with Savine's Reclamation, it's absolutely dope. Enlightened Tutor, it's pretty much the only tutor that we've got in the deck that is, I guess, as deliberate as something like this. We're just using it to go and find our particular enchantments or artifacts. There's quite a few, I guess, cool tech pieces that we can just sort of go and get. Ordinarily, you know, for particularly for this one and for all of your black tutors, um, I would say that they are like quite strong in any deck, obviously, but the, the targets that we're going to choose mean that we can actually kind of justify this being in a, in a lower powered deck because, you know, if we were going to, you know, enlighten tutor for omniscience and then we've got a way of cheating omniscience into play, then that's sort of just like, you know, really high spiky type plays. But if we're going to enlighten tutor for a fluctuator or something like that, it's, it's a little bit of a different approach. So for, for that reason is why I feel it's okay to include a card like Enlightened Tutor. But that said, we have, a, we have avoided the Black Tutors. So yeah, March of Otherworld Delight, great removal. Path to Exile, great removal. Swords to Plowshares, great removal. Cyclonic Rift, really good removal. Secure the Waste is a great one. Um, so X and White put X11 one, one White creature tokens onto the battlefield. Really, really good card. Um, you know, you can tutor it for with Spellseeker. So you tutor this for Spellseeker. The next turn you can go X is five or something like that. You've got five additional tokens, five blockers. We can even do it at instant speed as well, which is great for, you know, protecting it out of nowhere, I guess, is the, the way that I would be uh, looking at this card, protecting your life total and surviving by chumping with two one ones or something like that. Uh, really cool with, with that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Deadly Dispute, um, you know, it's great because it creates a, um, a treasure token when you, um, sa so you sacrifice a creature, it's probably going to be a 1-1, a one -one, or, or you can sacrifice an artifact. You create the treasure token, so you're actually just drawing three cards and you get a treasure token. So this is Ancestral Recall, basically. It's, uh, it's really good. Um, D-Spark, Fracture, Infernal Grasp, Vanishing Verse, Anguish Unmaking, and Deadly Rollick. 
All of these cards are just really good removal spells. I have been on a war with uh, with board wipes, and we're going to have a video coming up soon, which is going to sort of demonstrate why I don't like board wipes in this format. I think they are they're too good. They create unfair situations and unfun gameplay because of the fact that there is no other card that can generate you know an eight for one as an example and so of course we need to have resets but to me i'd rather play fairer stuff uh we're going to be using tokens uh you know we've got one counter spell on the deck which is fierce guardianship i think that's like kind of on theme because we can use it protect our commander or something like that and that's totally reasonable uh with this kind of powered deck but yeah i i want to be doing really like fair uh telegraphed ideas with this kind of list i want my opponents in the pod to see okay i know what's going on he's he's drawing a lot of cards and he's like getting card advantage but everything seems to be like in check everything's kind of reasonably fair it's not like we're you know ritual ritual you know emrakul or something like that and we're going to start you know taking people's turns or mind slaver locking you know we're doing fair stuff so and that's kind of on on the sort of the main idea with uh with why we've got so much single target removal over board wipes so if you if you want to play board wipes you know i don't want to yuck anyone's yum go right ahead and add board wipes it's definitely you know they're a good card um i just don't enjoy playing with them so that's that's why they're not in this list artifacts so um once again same argument with the enlightened tutor um there's a reason that i include this jewels lotus jeweled lotus and mana crypt in this list it's because we aren't necessarily doing like the the, the most insane unfair stuff that you can imagine uh, on the planet. And as such, we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of extra speed to basically get to the point where our deck actually does something so that we can do something before turn five or turn six, uh, essentially. That's the idea with this stuff. If you don't own them, you don't like playing with them, same same thing, you know, much the same as why I don't like board wipes. I do like these because at least my deck gets to do the thing, even if it's not quite powerful. So yeah, each to their own with, with both Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt. Currency Converter is a great, great card. Um, it is, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. And so essentially you put it under the converter and then you can use it to turn into a treasure token or a uh, creature token later on, which is then going to draw you a card and you know you get all of the extra value from your commander. Shadow Spear. Uh, this is another way that we're going to gain life. Uh, it's a it's a Noza Saga target. So yeah, you, you would have seen like with all four of these cards so far. You know, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, Currency Converter, Shadow Spear, um, and then we've also got Skull Clamp and Soul Ring. You know, we've got all of these Urza Saga targets that are all really good, really powerful cards. So that's the I guess the idea with that. Also, just you know, being able to get through Hexproof or Indestructible is actually really relevant in a lot of the mid power um, games. I think. And as such, yeah, that's the other reason for the include. Skull Clamp. So we're, we're going to be making a lot of tokens. Oh, some of them are going to be 2-2s, two granted. But, you know, we're going to be making a lot of 1-1s one as well. We've got Thopters. We've got Fairies. We've got all kinds of weird and wonderful things. So um, Skull Clamp's just amazing for having those on the battlefield. You know, it's basically cast it for one and then pay one to draw two cards. It's just totally insane. Soul Ring, uh, you know, staple of the format, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arcane Signet, exactly the same reason. We've got the Arcane Signet because we're in a three color deck and this is a really good rock. So that's the reason. Fluctuator. So this card's absolutely sick. Um, cycling abilities you activate cost up to two less to activate. So you can do some just fun stuff with this. So remember that um, it's, it's not going to make things, uh, you know, that are colored free or anything like that. It just reduces those those costs uh, up to two. So if it's just a two generic to cycle, you can do it for free, uh, everything like that. I think that's how it works. I'm, I'm sure it's how it works, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'll find out in the comments, I guess. Um, Sword of the Meek uh, pairs with the other card that you see here, which is Thopter Foundry. So these two basically can generate you infinite life. Uh, you can also make infinite mana with Urza, which is the only uh, infinite combo I think that's in this list. It's pretty much it. And it's, you know, it requires three pieces and like eight mana to do. So I don't think it's that egregious. I think it's fine and it fits perfectly within the theme. You know, we're making tokens, we're drawing cards, uh, you know, all of that stuff I think is, is just totally fine. If you don't like uh, infinites for this kind of list, just don't include it. Totally fine. Archaeomancer's map, I'm just so hot on this card. I think this card is so good, it's so flavorful, it's 
perfect in combo decks. It's a great, uh, you know, fiddle bender target. It's a really good uh, value card. It's it's cultivate on a uh, on a permanent, but that's actually just insane if you think about it. You know, when we're behind, this is really great, and when we're ahead, you know, we can use it to search for our basic planes. And the thing is we're a deck that doesn't necessarily want to play all of the, the land cards that we draw because we have all these cycling cards in there. So this is a really good, I guess, safe way for us to go and get two, two of our planes and, and be able to play them. So really good card in this kind of list. And then we've got the um, Stoneforge Mystic targets, the Nettlesist, Batterskull, and Cauldra Complete. So all of these have just got them, on them stapled onto them in this deck, draw a card because they create the living weapon, the, the germ. So really, really cool uh, interaction with that. Next up we have enchantments. So we've got Kai's Ghost Form. This I think is one of the most underplayed commander cards uh, ever. It's so good. It's one mana enchant creature or planeswalker you control when the enchanted permanent dies or, or is put into exile. So that's everything except for Ooblet basically or a bounce. It's going to return that card to the battlefield under your control. So absolutely sick. It's just so good. It's so cheap and it's just really, really nice. Uh, I was playing this in a Alurus deck where you could just continuously, uh, you know, cast it over and over again. It was really fun, but yeah, it's just, it's so cheap and it's just a really good card and you don't have to, you know, it's so flexible. Every single target in your deck for this can, can be uh, added with the exception of tokens, but you know, everything else is, is a target. We've got land tax. Uh, it's another one of those things that we can do, um, you know, because we don't want to draw necessarily play every land that we draw. We want to be cycling with them. This is another way to great way to go and get our basics. Training grounds. Uh, so you would have seen our commander has a very large uh, activated cost of six. And you know, this is, it's, it's six mana, create two, two twos and draw a card. So that's really good. But you know, if it's four, then it's starting to get a lot better. So that's the, uh, I guess, argument for including that. There's lots of other things that you could add to, to do this as well. Uh, actually, I don't think there's really that many in these, these colors, but yeah, basically this is, this is just a good sort of gimme for this one mana. It's very low opportunity cost. Bitter Blossom, um, each turn we're gonna make a token because we've got a commander that says whenever you make a token, you draw a card. Each turn we're gonna draw an extra card in our upkeep. Sick. Escape Protocol. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. When you do, exile target artifact or creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we cycle a card and we pay one, and then we flicker our soul ring, and then we cycle our card and we pay one, and we flicker our soul ring, we cycle our, yeah. Basically this is like just a way that you're not gonna go like infinite because there is a finite number of cards in your deck and we don't have any ways of like looping it. So we're not gonna be doing like, you know, uh, elixir of immortality loops or anything to generate infinite matter in the most convoluted way possible. You could definitely add that and do that kind of thing. Uh, we're not that deck, we're not trying to do that. But yeah, this is just a great card for, you know, getting extra value out of our, uh, out of cycling. You know, we're getting a bit, bit of extra mileage to sort of make all of that happen. Intangible Virtue, creature tokens you control, get plus one, plus one and have vigilance. Go and add every single uh, Lord effect in the game to this deck if you would like. I just like one that is potentially just tutorable from Xur every now and again. You know, you just, uh, I'll just use Xur to go and get the intangible virtue so I can get a little bit of extra damage in and maybe I can knock out one of my opponents or something like that. And it's sort of like a, a pump sort of combat trick at that point because you've gone to combat, you've declared your attacks, maybe you're attacking with like, you know, four two twos or something like that. And then all of a sudden they get an extra, you know, four power and it's like, oh wow, okay, it's, you know, enough to, to be worth the consideration. Ominous Seas, whenever you draw a card, you put a counter on the Seas and you remove eight counters and you make a 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, and that makes you draw a card, which then put a counter on it. So I guess, yeah, it's uh, just another way of adding uh, value into your cycling, which is gonna be drawing you cards because do not forget cycling draws you a card. Bastion of Remembrance, this is just a great value card. You know, whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain life. So this is a, um, blood artist type effect, but it's on a three drop that draws you a card because it's made you a token. So really cool. Drake Haven. So this is another one of our big cycling payoffs. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do create a two, two blue Drake creature token with flying. So we use it to pay one to make a, 
uh, create a drake and it's got flying and we draw a card. So it's like a just a sweet engine to generate a whole bunch of value. You're gonna need a lot of tokens for, for this deck. So yeah. Faith of the Devoted, whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So you can see sort of where this is going when you've got Faith of the Devoted and Escape Protocol as an example, and you're cycling cards and you're flickering with Soul Ring, and you'll get, you're breaking even and you're doing like, you know, maybe five to 10 damage a turn to each of your opponents, uh, you know, because you've got like that much flickering and sorry, that much, uh, you know, cycling happening as a result of it. Restoration of a Ganjo, search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, then number two, you can discard a card. When you do, return permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. We're gonna have so many things in our graveyard that we can return uh, because of all the cycling. So it might not even just be lands, could be other things as well. So very, very cool. Anointed Procession. So I did talk about, you know, not having a whole bunch of these things. You know, we, we're not having all of them, but we're going to add this one in just because why not, you know, just have a little bit of top end so we can close out games and we're not, not just having an obnoxious sort of board state with a hundred tokens and we, we still can't win the game. So that's the idea with that. Court of Grace, uh, we become the monarch and we draw cards and we make uh, more uh, tokens. So it's like a format of Bitter Blossom, <laughs> basically, that can sometimes just be a Luminarch Ascension instead. So really cool card. Uh, I, I like it for the value side of things. Felidar Retreat, uh, this is sick actually. So you got landfall, whenever a land ETBs, uh, you can create a, a cat and then the cat draws you a card because it's a token. So that's the idea with that one. Smothering Tithe, probably doesn't really need much of an explanation, sick card. New Perspectives, this is a good one. Um, whenever, when new perspectives enter the battlefield, draw three cards. As long as you have seven or more cards in hand, you can pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. So all of your, uh, all of your cycling becomes free. Really good, really, really, really good. Shark Typhoon, uh, this is just a, you know, we're gonna make a shark, a really big one. Sometimes we're gonna hard cast this and we're gonna make more tokens every time we do non-land stuff. It's just an engine, there's so much flexibility. You can just do a bazillion things with this card. It's a great card even without your commander. It's a sick card in this deck with the commander. Uh, so that wraps it up for the non-lands. Let's have a look at the lands. So lands are real straightforward. We've got all of our fetch lands because we have some landfall uh, things. You know, we also want to basically make sure that we're getting specific lands with our fetches, um, you know, and we can keep all of our cycling lands to cycle with if we need to. Uh, Ash Barons, basic land cycling. Once again, this is a basic land cycle, so it doesn't draw a card. It searches it and puts it into your hand. It won't trigger your draw things. We've got Baron Moor, straight cycling, blasted landscapes, straight cycling. Uh, all the fetch lands, Castle Arden Vales, four mana, add a one one that draws you a card. So it's four mana uh, to play a bad Baleful Strix every turn from a land, really sick. Uh, Fetid Pools is cycling. We're not gonna sort of go over that stuff in detail, but uh, Field of the Dead is really flavorful in this. Uh, we're gonna be making zombies, tokens, drawing cards, really sick. What are the other things we've got? Shock lands. If you own uh, OG jewels, add them in as well. Definitely worth it. Um, you could even probably go up a land or two uh, if you wanted on this list. Uh, I just wanted to include as much as I could uh, of the non-land stuff. Uh, moving through basics, everything like that. Polluted Mire is another cycler. Rafines is a cycler, really good there, but the triomes are obviously great because you can uh, you know, fix your mana perfectly. We've got more cycling. The only other thing that's sort of, a, you know, not a basic land or a fetch land is Urza Saga. Um, and Urza Saga is just a great card because it does all the things we want. Now, the few, a few things with the land base, as I mentioned, you can just cut the, uh, the, the shocks if you want to run OG jewels instead, or you want to run both. And this is probably one of the few decks where if you were going to go harder into the cycling, so you probably don't need to add the fetch lands and the fetch lands, you know, are going to, you know, chop off probably two, three hundred dollars worth of the cost of this deck. The cost uh, on as of Moxfield came in at fifteen hundred dollars. So obviously I'm not saying go and spend fifteen hundred dollars on this deck. You don't have to go and do that whatsoever. Um, what you could do, though, is uh, proxy up your fetches or proxy or cut the mana crypt and the jeweled lotus. And that's gonna, you know, cut six, 700 bucks off of the cost of the deck straight away. 
The land base for this type of deck could be so cheap because all of the cycling lands are cheap as chips. You could you could build like a $10 land base for this deck and it would be awesome. And you know, that's where the bulk of the uh, the cost of this deck is going to be with the exception of a, you know, a few bits and pieces. Cards like, you know, your Bitter Blossoms, your Shark Typhoons, they can be expensive. Smothering Tides obviously expensive. Um, you know, there's, there's quite a few sort of XE cards like the Fierce Guardianship. It's another 70 bucks you can cut. So I'm just giving you like a balanced, uh, I guess, power level appropriate uh, idea for for this list. But I do not believe that you, you would need to spend $1,500 to make this deck great. Like you can cut the Entomb, you know, that's an expensive card these days. Uh, yeah, like there's plenty of things that you could do to just make it so much cheaper. Um, yeah, so that is pretty well the deck. Um, I really, as I mentioned at the start of the list, I really want to make sure that when, when we're making like a, a really uh, a really defined archetype like uh, Tokens Matter in, in Esper or in Azorius, it, it's, it's, it's been done a thousand times. So I want to give you something that's actually like a bit of a, a unique idea or a different approach that's not just directly down the line. I think cycling fits really well with this kind of commander. And it's, you know, just a different way to build, uh, you know, a list that the commander is obviously good. You know, it's it's one of those things. It's, it's drawing you cards and it's creating you tokens. So like those are like sort of semi card advantage for creatures as well. So any any commander that's going to be able to generate your card advantage and it's got a sink in it, it's going to be great. You know, any literally any commander that has a, a, an infinite mana sink that you can draw cards with is, is a win con in the command zone. But, you know, we don't want to do that. We, we want to have some fun with this. So uh, if you enjoyed what you saw with this list, I uh, really appreciate uh, if you would eat your vegetables and give me a sub. Uh, I'm putting a lot of content out at the moment. Uh, the channel's just been growing so fast uh, and it's just been fantastic to see a lot of new faces coming in. It also, it's also great to see so many people coming in and commenting on the videos. Like so many of my shorts are getting just heaps of engagement. So it lets me know that uh, you guys are actually interested in what I'm putting out. So yeah, thanks so much for checking out the deck tech. Hope you enjoy the list and I will see you next time. Bye for now.